Uh, let's get to talking about actually tuning your car. So you just purchased some parts, Cobb, um, Perrin, um, any of those companies out there, and you've installed them on your car because you want to do this yourself, and you uh, want to start doing the tuning yourself. So the parts are installed, you're all done, you're cleaned up from all that greasiness, and you're ready to, uh, to actually start using the car and using these parts. So the point of this video here is to go over those first steps. You know, the, the Cobb Stage 2 tune was good enough, um, even with the parts that you've installed, or you're just gonna go straight to the Pro Tune, or your tune in this case, and uh, you, wanna, you wanna hit that next level of what the performance can do without really having to add that many parts. So I'm talking Stage 2 stuff in, the, in this case right now. Or at least the basic minimum parts. Um, the intake, the downpipe, the exhaust, uh, maybe an uppipe or something like that. Uh, these basic parts are really going to start opening the car up for uh, the fun driving. So we're, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get access tuner opened and uh, we'll get started. Alright, so you can see me look to the right a little bit. And that's my other screen I have over here. I kind of have some notes to kind of follow how I want to talk about this because there's definitely a lot to cover. And I want to keep things kind of in order so that uh, I don't over talk things or I don't miss something. So the first few things that we're going to actually uh, talk about is basically understanding what you're looking for in your car. So the first thing I want to, I want to look at is uh, your primary um, open loop fueling. Um, so in this case, this is going to be the Cobb Stage 2. Um, this is what they have set. Now I pretty much just followed this myself. Um, I've made some adjustments here and there, um, but we'll, we'll worry about what I've made adjustments to later and state that this is a pretty decent following for um, for as far as your fueling targets go. Uh, you, if you wanted to say enriching it a little bit here, um, just to be safe with your car, if it's hot outside or you know you just wanna be extra protected, um, you can add, you can remove a little bit of fuel or add a little bit of fuel there um, if you really needed to. But just remember that when you look at this, just because you put this number 1107 at 2.25 load and 6800 RPM, the car is not gonna change because you changed this number. This is just what the car wants to target in this case, um, so that you can go back and look at your logs and see, did you hit this target? If not, you can make that adjustment. So just, that's something to keep in mind, that these numbers are just like a, a scale that you're looking at and you're trying to hit that number based on other factors. Um, so that's the first thing I wanted to make sure that we talked about. Uh, the next thing that we'll go into um, is the load. So I won't touch it right now because I want to go into a little more detail. But you need to worry about your calculated load. Um, and you need to adjust this based on what your car is doing. Uh, what I would state is a good starting point. And again, don't quote me on this. I'm not a professional or anything. But a good starting point would be to scale this up to 3.0. Um, that at least with a, with a basic intake and, a, and an exhaust and a downpipe, you should be hitting... Somewhere in there at your peak peak moments. Um, 2.75, you're definitely going to blow past that and at least hit 2.8, 2.9. So we'll, we'll go into more detail on that. So the, let's go with some examples as far as what are you going to change first? What is the first thing you're going to do? Well, let's make sure that you're starting on a, at a clean point. So you've added the parts to your car, the, the, the parts that Cobb recommends for their stage two. If that's the case, then we'll file the stage two uh, tune. If you haven't and you're starting from a stock map because you're adding your own parts in or you necessarily don't have an air intake that follows Cobb's rules, in this case, um, you're gonna start with a stock map and you're probably gonna wanna start with a stock intake and any other stock parts that you've, you've changed you know, as far as the air incoming goes because you wanna get a good math reading so that everything reads properly. So that's just a, a caveat to add in there. Um, most of you probably will be starting from a, some kind of Cobb stage two tune. So the first thing we're gonna look at here is um, as far as starting off, we need to make some uh, adjustments to the map. Something to change the way that the car is going to, uh, to react when certain situations happen. Because we're no longer following what Subaru is recommended because we've changed the parts. So the first thing you want to do is change the dam reset. Um, and that is basically whenever you, uh, you use the, um, the access tuner, the access port to reset the ECU or you 
let the battery set unplugged for 10 plus minutes or so or however long it takes to reset it when you actually go to turn the car back on and the ECU has been reset to the learn or the stock parameters in this case uh, you want to have the car start somewhere so Subaru actually starts your dam if you're using a 32-bit ECU um, or like a 2004 STI or newer STI version um, then in this case you're gonna have a one dam to be your your cars running perfect so they have that um, now it's kind of recommended some people say you should uh, bump this up to a, a, a 0.8 and then um, drive a little bit and the car will bump up to one me personally when I get in the car I want that car running exactly peak performance I don't gas the car as soon as I reset the ECU um, I obviously let the car warm up and do its thing I drive about five five miles or so and then at that point the car should be good and I jump at it but I don't want the car to to have to make any or more adjustments than it needs to so I start this at one so that's something you can learn and play with to see what you like um, but uh, you're not gonna hurt anything by starting at a lower value to get to one just personal preference in a sense so the next thing that we'll we'll look at here is um, is the threshold so threshold the next thing we'll look at and this is basically the uh, dam threshold so what this is trying to say let me sure check my notes and say it right so basically um, if the uh, dam falls be so below a certain point um, not only will the uh, car make changes but uh, it'll make changes to the fueling as well and all the different parameters that are set based on what you have here so the first thing we'll start with is the fueling uh, change um, Subaru as you can see has the dam when you hit 3.35 that's when the uh, high detonation um, fueling will take over and in that case it'll be a different map that's going to run a lot richer probably 0 0.5, 0 0.6 um, AFR richer in this case to kind of protect the engine um, in, in case that happens now me personally if from my understanding and from what you know just some common sense here if you hit 0.35 um, on a built performance engine stock engine may be able to handle it but uh, when you start adding parts to it and improving the performance if you hit 0.35 and you're still running lean in a situation or something there's some damage done to your car already so uh, a good suggestion is to change this to a um, a 0.75 and basically that'll be one maybe two drops to your dam and then you'll hit that fueling uh, you could set it to 0 0.85 um, if you're having issues or if you're if you're having dam drops a lot you can save that fueling um, so it's, it's a good, good number to play with but for like a standard value 0 0.75 should be enough to cover you for two drops the timing will drop and then a the fueling drop after that so the next thing we'll look at um, is well the load range we'll worry about that the load range will boot, worry about that so we're gonna look at the math calibration nope math limit max so again this is a stage um, to um, tune so in this case we're gonna actually change this uh, 300 you you probably won't 300 but just to be safe um, we're gonna bump it up to about 500 uh, again you probably won't hit 500 on the stock math sensor um, you may have to double check that but you won't even get close to it um, so bump it up higher just so there's no issues with the with the um, ECU making any corrections for anything that happened or any out of form crazy numbers so the next thing uh, we'll do is um, load limits load limits so again load is basically what the highest load that you think your car will see um, in this case setting your car to um, 4G's was a good high number to set start end so that you don't have to worry about any issues as far as the car making any, any uh, adjustments to it um, I bumped mine up a little bit uh, I went to 5 just to be safe so that you don't have to worry about it um, but 4 should be fine for most I personally am only hitting like 3.6, 3.7 in my currently tuned car all the way up to where I'm at now. So you're not even hitting four, but just bump us up a little bit just so you have some room to play with. If you want to mess around with some of the other tables here, let's see. Um, you can have the 
some of the launch control stuff, um, flat foot shifting. I, I make those adjustments on the actual axis tuner when I'm driving the car. So I don't actually set a value because I don't want flat foot shifting to actually be active. The majority of the time, if I want it to be active, I'm actually gonna, you know, get to the access uh, port and make that change on the access port just so I can use it. Uh, fortunately, I, I'm i focused on the road and not the RPM sometimes, so I'll hit that fuel cut and the car will be very, very erratic when that, when that happens. So I personally don't do it. Uh, you can set up your launch control here. Um, Again, I don't use launch control. I actually have never even used it, so that's up to you to make these changes. You can watch all kinds of YouTube videos. I may even make one once I start to use it, but uh, you can make your adjustments here. Uh, let's see, next thing, uh, idle speed. Idle speed, if I can type today. Not at all. So idle speed, um, little targets A, I don't know about B and C, you can make those adjustments. So. They target 700. Um, with the stage two tune, you can keep it at 700. Once you start making changes to your injectors and anything that affects fueling directly, you might want to bump this up just to kind of create a smoother idle. Um, I'm sitting at about 800 right now because of the fuel pump and the injector change and, and, and the lines and everything. And the car seems to run just a little bit more smoother at the higher RPM. And again, this is not a daily car, so it's okay if I do that. Um, let's see, rev limit, I don't think, I put notes for that, but let's see what we have here, fuel cut. So yeah, you, you can set rev, rev limit, um, you know, personally, I actually set my rev limit to 6800 and 6900, so I dropped it down to 100 RPM, um, just because after 6500, the engine itself really kind of tapers off a small amount, so it's really, I don't actually hit rev, rev limit all the time when I'm shifting, but... So that's something to take a look at. Um, this one again, just something to. And we'll do it this way: speed limit. Where'd you go? Speed limit. So you can set uh, your speed limit. In this case, you can increase it up a little bit. Again, you probably won't hit those limits, but it's there. It's a number to make adjustments to. And let's see. I think that'll be uh, that'll be it for as far as some of the initial things you're going to want to make changes to uh, again if you're you know if you have like different intakes and stuff and you're starting at those points you may want to start from a stock intake get your car tuned up to a good level um, as far as improving that stock tune or that stage two tune with your stock parts and then add in your parts and then go ahead and tune for those I know it's extra work and extra steps but uh, going from just a stock based tune with the MAF and then trying to jump to a bigger intake or a bigger MAF or whatever the case may be, cold air intake, things like that, you're changing that air turbulence. And it might just be a little bit harder to really dial in the actual um, the MAF scaling. So it's a suggestion, but um, I personally went straight to it and just made the adjustments. It took a, took a few weekends of getting MAF math logs and stuff, but uh, it can be done. So let's talk about uh, the load scaling. That is one thing I wanted to get into, uh, into some details about as I close out all my information that I need here. So load, let's start with the, uh, with the most basic load table here, and that will be your fuel table. So as you can see, we talked about it earlier, your load up here is going to um, need to be increased. Uh, there's different ways to approach this. Um, I, you're probably gonna hear different viewpoints from some guy who's been tuning for 15 years and some guy who's been for 10 years and some guy who's, excuse me, like, like me, that's been like into it for two years. And I'm not tuning anybody else but myself. But, uh, you're gonna have different approaches. And then again, you're gonna have to have your own approach because your car is gonna be different than my car or that guy that's been tuning for 10 years and all the cars he's tuned. So there's different ways you wanna look at how you wanna approach your load. Um, where, what do you do What do you do with your car? How do you use your car? Um, what, what's the purpose behind it? Um, so in my case, what I kind of did initially is I went and said, well, like we talked earlier, you're probably going to see a load up to about three. Um, you can grab this number, 
highlight it all, and then you want to interpolate horizontally. And what that kind of does is it, it takes the numbers across, makes them all somewhat equal, and then uh, you can make your adjustments there. Uh, that's one way of doing it. Um, what I did, because I wanted to keep these kind of stock values, and you really don't expect too much out of these portions here. So I went and made adjustments here. And what I did is just interpolated those numbers. Um, this is where I want my adjustments to be. Um, later on, you can make adjustments here if your load increases, um, like beyond like four or five, then you might need to make some adjustments because in my case, the uh, stock tune is, um, or the stage 2006 STI, we only have, I believe, 14 or 15 rows where the newer cars, I think, had some more. So you, that's the first thing you want to do. You want to figure out what your load um, is going to be, how you want to use your load, how you want to drive your car, and what you, what you need to do here. Uh, you have two different ways I showed you. No, neither is best, per se, or worse. Um, it's just figuring out what works for you. So once you make that change, you do need to actually make that load change in a lot of, a lot other, more of the, yeah. You need to make that change in other places. So if I'm just typing in load, let me go start going through these, all these different um, type of compensations we can make adjustments to. I guess it's gonna touch upon a lot. So let's not do load. And we'll just go through the quick ones that I know. So obviously you're gonna make some adjustments to So basically, 8 Sudi, you're not going to touch too much. Um, fuel in tables, you're definitely going to be touching a lot of the fuel tables. So in this case, um, your open loop fueling, you're going to make your adjustments there. Uh, transitions, air fuel learning, you're not going to make too many adjustments there. Let's see, overrun, tip and enrichment. That's a different story. We'll talk about tipping later. That's something I'm still, uh, I still want to cover. Ignition tables. You're definitely going to make some adjustments here. So again, there they went up to 290 here, but you're going to make, you and I think this table actually has one or two more rows than um, the fuel tables for open loop. So you're going to apply your change here on the same basis. Um, but you're going to actually give this table, in my opinion, a little bit more leeway. So you might actually want to go to like, say, 315 in this case. Uh, your fuel, as long as you're staying the same, as, you in as long as you're not increasing too much as far as your load goes, that fueling is just going to keep carrying over. So if it's 10.5 at this certain range, at this certain access, then if you're at 3 low and you hit 315 and there's no table there, it's just going to keep that 10.5 going, which is not a problem. Um, you, that's something you can make adjustments to when you make uh, more power and whatnot. So make sure you hit the you're not you're not here. Um, I know there was a, a prime ignition, same thing. So this is the other big table. This is actually the same columns and rows as your uh, primary open loop. So you're going to make your change here, and then I think under not control. There's going to be some load ranges. So you're going to come into your not control for your course knock. Um, yeah, your, your fine knock. And I believe your feedback knock. So you're going to make some change. Yeah, so at least definitely your load range here. So you're going to want to increase this load range for the course knock learning, or in this case, feedback knock. Just to call it course knock in that situation. And then your um, fine knocks. So you want to increase this to match the number that you put um, in your other loads so that the car knows to continue to watch for knock in those higher loads. And I think that covers the most for the uh, load limit. Yeah, that covers the majority of, of changing. Um, there might be a ones or few that I, I missed, but go through and check all, your tab all the tables um, and make sure that your load ranges have been increased to uh, cover the change that you made. So if you're going to be running um, pure open loop, uh, in this case, you wanna go into your um, your closed loop here and go into your closed loop fueling compensation 
And again, this is something you're not really gonna worry about because you're gonna be running and controlling your own fuel. And you're just gonna wanna zero these bad boys out here. Um, in that case, your car is pretty much going to rely on the open loop map. Now this applies, and I, don't quote me on this again, this applies to the, um, the GD or the 04 to 06 um, STIs. Uh, I think at the newer ECUs, they started making some changes that are different, and I believe those guys actually have to, um, I haven't looked too much into it because I haven't messed with it, but they actually have to basically tell the car um, to switch earlier to primary um, in that case. Uh, so what's the first thing you're gonna do? Um, again, I don't wanna make this video too long, but I do wanna cover this. Uh, so what's the first thing you're gonna do? You got, you made these changes, you're gonna go out and you're gonna flash it and uh, you're gonna take the car for a drive. Car may not run the way you want, car may have a few issues. Definitely don't wide open throttle the car. Um, but what are the first few things that you're gonna wanna do? Well, you made these changes and you wanna dial in the fueling. So I'm just going through my notes here real quick. You're gonna to wanna to calibrate uh, the MAF sensor for open loop. And what you're gonna do with that is um, you're gonna kinda of go through and calibrate the, uh, the drivability of the car. We're not talking wide open throttle yet. We're just talking the drivability. So the first few things that you're gonna do is you're gonna come up to here, go to your options, and you're gonna pull up what you're actually gonna data log. Um, what I suggest, um, and there's a few different ways you go about this, you wanna do the MAF voltage and the MAF mass airflow. Uh, you obviously want your throttle position and you're gonna want your uh, commanded fuel because you're gonna wanna see what your car is looking for. And then you're gonna wanna do your, your wide band. So in my case, it's not showing here. Um, so this is a debugging O2. I have um, Innovate, so it's gonna show somewhere in here depending on what option you chose up here. Um, so choose your, your wide band here to log or however you're logging it. Uh, inject your duty cycle, that's just to be safe to make sure you're not hitting any, um, any issues with inject your duty cycle. Uh, and you're overfueling. Um, if you're just doing a stage two tune, once we lean it out a little bit, you, you should be fine as far as that goes. Uh, your man, man of fluid uh, relative pressure, so you know your boost. Um, and then of course, the most important stuff is to make sure your car is not knocking. And we are going to do the fine, fine knock feedback. And where is the dam? And the dam. So those are the really basic ones you want to log. So you can gather data about what the car, that's unchecked I guess, gather data about what the car is actually doing and then we'll talk about how to use that data and how to reapply it to the car in another video because that's going to be a, a whole other discussion. So this is, state, this is the start, this is stage one. We made some changes to the car, we didn't do anything too drastic, enough to really flash the tune, you can go out and drive the car, don't wide open throttle because you've made changes and you don't know exactly what they're doing yet but uh, you're ready to start that process for tuning. Um, just be ready to basically grocery getter this car um, from this point on. You're really not gonna be touching wide open throttle for a bit until we make these adjustments that need to be done. Uh, so I plan on trying to pump a video out once a week about this, going into the steps you wanna take to, uh, to get to the point of wide open throttle. So uh, I'll get this uploaded and get this to you guys and get started on the next one. See ya.